right? Yes. Through the big circle? No. 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 Okay, well, let me do that. Here's my suggestion for the sequence in which I suggest you plan your outline. My suggestion is first determine your topic. What? So determine your topic. Now that's pretty easy on this because you know what the topic is. The title of your speech is yes, introducing a significant indiv individual. So you need to decide who the significant individual is, or if there's more than one, who they are. That's number one. Number two, you break that into parts. Now, there are different ways to break that into parts. One would be three reasons, for instance, that this person is significant to you. Another would be three characteristics about the person. Another might be chronology, the person's past, present, and future. It doesn't matter, but you need to be very clear on what parts of the topic you're going to discuss with your audience. Then you can start thinking, well, if it's past, I'm going to talk about what happened in 1987. I'm going to talk about the important incident in 1999. I'm going to talk about what happened last year. And then the present, I'm going to talk about three things from there. And in the future, I'm going to, I'm going to project into the future and think about other four things that I want to talk about. Okay, This comes first. Only after you have got this done, would I suggest that you prepare your introduction and conclusion? Oh. Now, if you're writing a line, if you're writing a poem, chances are you don't do it this way. You don't start with the middle of the poem. If you're writing an essay, you probably don't start with the middle of the essay. <coughs> That's because writing is different from speaking. My suggestion is that you leave the introduction and conclusion to after the middle because. How can you write a, an introduction to something if you don't know what it is? Mm -hmm. Furthermore, in the process of coming up with these details here, <coughs> you're very likely to get an idea that you can put into the introduction. So this should lead to the introduction rather than the other way around. The introduction has the three parts that I haven't mentioned yet, right? Because we're just now talking about it. There's three parts. They're right there on the rubric. It says, Introduction, well, first of all, it says introduction and conclusion are 100% text-free. It doesn't say memorized, it just says text-free. So that means you're going to write your introduction out word for word, but you don't have to use those exact words when you're speaking, just as long as you don't have to read what you've got on the paper. So the introduction, as you notice here, says it grabs attention, introduces the subject, and previews the bottom. Now, you remember the first words of my introduction to my wife? I asked you that before. The very first words I said? This is my part. A long time ago. Oh. Why would I start out that way? And why would those words catch your attention? Because you want to know what happens when it happens. Yeah, yeah, I could have said in 1985, I think it was November. What's better about saying a long time ago? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a short and sweet. Here. Short and sweet. Uh, it, it like it like brings your attention. Like what you know? What does know, it remind you? Uh, uh, a kid's story. Yeah, a fairy story. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time. Oh, time okay. ago. So part of what I'm saying here is choose your very first words carefully. And your very last words. By the way, Isaiah has arrived. Right. Yeah. Choose your first and last words carefully so that you get maximum impact from them. Right, so the first thing you're doing with your introduction is you're grabbing attention. Then you're introducing the subject. It's, it's, it's written here. Now, I didn't introduce the subject when I started, did I? So a long time ago, I was giving a workshop on resonance halls. What does that have to do with my wife? Because uh, she's in the school part, too. Yeah, but you didn't know that in the first words, did you? I could have said, I'm going to tell you about my wife and why she's just so important to me first. But that is jumping the gun, I would say. Use the opportunity to get people's attention before you introduce the subject. And then preview the main points. And that's where you go back to 
the main concept for the course, which is tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them, right? So that's where I said I'm going to tell you three reasons why my wife is such a great roommate. She perseveres toward goals, she cares about her health, she is devoted to her family. All right. Then it says the conclusion reviews and summarizes and provides a final thought. So there are two functions there review and provide a final thought. The review is where you state your main points again. So in my conclusion, that's where you tell them what you told them. Like I said, I told you about how she perseveres toward goals, she cares about her health, and she's devoted to her family. And the final thought, what were my, what were my last words, do you remember? That you told us that you uh, 25 or more years from now. Uh, if we're lucky, we might still be roommates 25 or more. Yeah, something like that. As it gets further and further in the past, <coughs> it becomes less and less likely that I will be with her 25 years as I get older because I'm going to die. <laughs> but the general idea is still the same, that I hope that the future is one in which we will remain roommates. I, what I probably started saying now is for the rest of my life. <coughs>